Welcome to Using UCCX Unified Intelligence Center. I'm Marty Griffin, a Cisco Contact Center instructor from Sunset Learning Institute. This is part one of five presentations. Getting started with CUIC will help you get started using the standard CUIC embedded into the UCCX version 10.0. Here you will learn to navigate the report administration pages and how to generate and filter stock reports. We'll discuss authorized users, the available reports both historical and live data, and accessing Unified Intelligence Center as part of our CUIC overview. In addition, we'll discuss value lists and collections, managing and generating stock reports and filtering, as well as scheduling reports and using help. Additionally, there will be other CUIC for UCCX videos. They will include customizing stock reports, creating custom reports, creating dashboards, and managing users and permissions. Let's start with a brief overview of CUIC. Cisco Unified Intelligence Center is a web-based application that provides historical, real-time, and live data reports. Unified Intelligence Center serves the following primary purposes. It obtains data from the Base Solutions database. Those databases are called data stores. The Base Solution can be any of the Cisco Contact Center products. While we're here today to talk about Cisco Contact Center Express, this same solution is used for Contact Center Enterprise. It also, product allows you to create custom queries to obtain specific data that's important to the metrics that you as a report provider are interested in. And we can customize the visual presentation of the reports with charts and graphs, and it customizes the data presented in the reports. See what you need. It also allows different groups of people to view specific data based on their roles. CUIC for UCCX replaces the historical reporting client, HRC, that we found in earlier versions of, of Contact Center Express. The HRC is no longer available in UCCX version 10 and all subsequent versions. This product has two license packages, standard is installed with the normal installation of UCCX. It is embedded into the primary and HA servers. It is available for all UCCX license packages and standard is pretty much a full featured product and it satisfies the requirements of most customers with its stock reports. Premium, however, requires a separate server to provide the additional capability of creating customized reports. Premium also requires an optional license. The following user types can access reports. Agents and the agent user can access the live data agent reports via web pages and live data may also be presented by gadgets on the agent's finesse desktop. Supervisors can access the live data agent and supervisor reports. To access live data reports, a supervisor must be assigned an agent unified CCX extension in Communications Manager. Reporting users can access all the historical reports and live data reports available through CUIC. For this session, we will assume our user has appropriate authorization and privileges. This will be the super user. Another video in this series, Managing Users and Permissions, will address creating reporting users, user groups, and permissions. There are two types of reports to be viewed. These reports access past data from historical data source to display information for the specified period of time. The refresh rate is 30 minutes. Historical reports can display up to 8,000 rows at a time. Live data reports are based on an asynchronous event stream from a live data source and they are updated in real time. Agents and supervisors use these reports to observe the status of calls and agents. Live data reports access current data from a Java messaging service, JMS data source, to display information about the current state of the contact center. The refresh rate is three seconds. 
An example of a historical report is shown here. This happens to be the Contact Service Q Activity Report. As noted here on the tab, this tab is a report on the sales and the support contact service queues. Across the top are icons for navigating through these reports. There's a save as, a print, a filter which establishes what criteria and what parameters you want to see in this report, a SQL to show you the SQL query, a refresh, a pop out, and an export. We'll generate this report or these reports a little later on in this presentation. We just wanted you to see this for now. Additionally, we've run some other reports here and we have tabs and every time a tab appears, uh, every time we click on something, a new tab appears here and this will be quite handy for moving from one report to another. The live data report viewer allows you to view multiple grid views of the same report and resize the column size and edit the current view and present live data towards the finesse desktop using gadgets. Here's an example of a live data report viewer. Uh, missing a lot of the icons across the top here, but this is a live report. CUIC supports web browser clients that run the JavaScript where HTTPS is used for logging in. After you log in, HTTP is used to access all other pages. The two currently supported browsers for this product are Internet Explorer 9.0 in the standard mode Internet Explorer 10 and 11 in compatibility mode, and Firefox 24 and above. And to enable compatibility mode in Internet Explorer, we have to add the website for the CUIC server. We need to also disable any pop-up blockers in either one of the browsers. And for version information, we need to refer to the Cisco Unified Intelligence Center Bill of Materials for current information on the browsers that are supported. There are three possible URLs to access CUIC administration pages on the CUIC server, which in our case is also the same server as CCX. One of them is HTTP and just the host address, and then just click Cisco Unified Contact Center Express Reporting, or you can enter the host address colon 8081 slash CUIC, or a secure login with colon 8444-CUIC. Let's check it out and take a tour. Let's get started with generating reports. Let's see how easy it is to run a report. First of all, I click on the report section over here and I see there's different kinds of reports. Let's go look at the stock reports and by clicking on that, I see that reports and stock reports are also available to me over here in the center part of this display. There's different kinds of reports or different classes, one for the intelligent center administration and sure enough there's an audit trail that we can audit the changes that have been made by report users there. There's a second set over here called the historical reports and those live in here folders for chat, email, inbound, outbound, and system and yet there's another one here for live data. Live data for the agent, live data for the supervisor. I have some data in here for inbound calls. Let's go take a look and see what that might take. The agent call summary report is available to us as well as many other reports that are stock reports. If I click on that, I wind up looking at a filter page for that report. The filter page has several parameters on it that allow me to filter the information that I want to have displayed in this report. One of them is the interval, and the interval gives me two op options in here. One is to pick the relative date range, and the other is the absolute date range. We're going to be kind of relative on this thing, and pick this month. Um, we could have picked the alternate date range and specified the date and the minute as to the borders of the information beginning and ending for this report. We've just said let's go do it for this month. If I pull down here a little bit I see additional parameters. One is for the regroup resource group names. We don't have any resource groups in this system 
and the other for agent names. Yep, we've got four agents available to us, and let's go report on those four agents. And uh, down a little further, we see the skills names, and sure enough, we have two skills here that we'd like to report on. And if I pull down a little bit further, we see that we can filter on team names. And sure enough, the CUIC team is what we have chosen. Here, with all the filters in place, we can run this report. And the report pops up. And sure enough, Bruce and Carmen and Marty and Mike are all showing up on this report. Let's take a look at this report for just a minute. It starts out with the agent name and the agent ID and the extension for the IPCC. Now IPCC is an old name for Contact Center Express and in the future video that we're going to do customize stock reports uh, we're going to change that to possibly ACD. The extension for non-IPCC and it turns out that in 10.0 we can now report on the non-IPCC or the primary line of the agent's desktop. Indicate how many total inbound and this whole section here is talking about the inbound ACD calls and key to this is our average uh, talk time, uh, the total number of calls of course and the average work time which is after call work. In that case uh, we've totaled up the inbound calls over there and then we reach down here and we find that there's a bar that we can advance this over to the right and deal with, for example, inbound non-ACD calls and so forth. Our outbound calls can be recorded and our total ACD calls altogether. An interesting thing to do is to say, well, this Mike Keitzer guy here uh, doesn't work here anymore and we would not like to report on him. So we can on this same report revisit the filter again and pull down a little bit here and find Mike Keitzer here and make him not a part of the report anymore. So our filtering no longer includes Mike Keitzer. Let's see what happens when we run that report. These four agents here become three agents with Mike Keitzer absent. In the future, when we want to customize reports, it's useful to see what the SQL query was for this particular report that we're running, and that's what the SQL query looks like. Uh, kind of nice to be able to cut and paste that and work with it in a custom environment. Uh, we're not going to do that right here, right now, but uh, possibly in a later video we'll handle that. We also can pop out a report as we have done this one and bring that to a window where we can hold that window open while we're doing other things. Of course that report is always available to us. That report is always available to us through the tabs up here and we can get back to those reports quite easily. Your contact center manager might say ah, I'd like to have that in an Excel spreadsheet and that is giving us the opportunity to punch up export here and we can export this to an Excel spreadsheet. This is, do, you want to do you want to export? Sure. And uh, many different ways of doing this here. We can save it as a file. In this case we're going to open Microsoft Excel for this case and sure enough open will pop a spreadsheet and all the information you saw in that report will live on that spreadsheet. Kind of cool, it gives you an opportunity to give the bean counters what they want on an Excel spreadsheet. And there's always more. If I punch over the always more buttons here, I see that there are several types of reports that are available to us. And the one we've been looking at is the agent call summary report, but the SQL query that we sent out there collected a lot of information and that information can be used to display information in different ways. So it contributes to reports for example like this one and this particular report is going to come up as a bar chart. Sure enough there's Marty Griffin and Carmen and Bruce Wilkinson here and uh, we've got information about their talk time and their work time and there doesn't seem to be any hold time for these agents. Sure enough, we can pick additional ones over here. 
and this one is for the maximum call time for outbounds on IPCC calls. It looks like uh, Carmen has, uh, has kind of maxed it out there a few times. That's cool. And another method of, of showing information for the total inbound outbound calls by the agent by agent charts. So over here is a, a legend for the information over here in the chart and for inbound outbound and different types of calls that have been made by the different types of agents. Very cool. Let's use these handy tabs to get back to the report list and let's report on the contact service queue activity report just to bring up a second report here to have a chance to take a look at it and of course we're going to pick the interval for this month so we can catch some information here. We're going to report on the sales CSQ as well as the support CSQ and we'll pick the CSQ type to be a skill type of CSQ. That gives us a chance to run this report. And our sales and support CSQs will show calls presented and average queue time and maximum queue time and how many calls were handled and so forth and lots of other information in here by using the pullover bar to see what else is available to us. Nice report. And just to show you how much information does live here, let's punch up the agent detail report. Again the filter opens up and we will pick this month and again we'll pick these agents and again we'll pick sales and support for the skill names and again we'll pick the team. Let's check it out. This is going to give us a report for every call that these agents have handled in this period of time. So we'll go ahead and run that report and we see massive amounts of information available to us uh, for Bruce. We get down to Carmen, we can follow down to Marty and down to Mike and see the information that's available to them. We can filter by extension uh, all the calls that went to 2007. Uh, we can filter by duration, uh, some other information here uh, that's available to us. Pretty cool. Let's take the opportunity to look at value list. Here we see a group of value lists that are available to us from a stock standpoint. It looks like I have customized one of them at one time. And here we can punch up a value list. Now the question is what is a value list? And a value list is a grouping of like reportable objects. For example, all agent names that are configured in the system are probably grouped under UCCX agent name by default with this stock report, the uh, stock value list that we see here. If I punch up the values here, I will actually see the names of the agents out here. If I punch up the values over here on the agent ID, I'll actually see the IDs of the agent. Let's close that and go back to the UCCX agent name here. And let's uh, see if we can edit that a little bit. And sure enough, here I am in uh, the edit business, but I notice uh, that everything except for the collections down here are grayed out. And that means that this is a stock value list, and no, you can't change anything in the value list query or the description or any of the information that's up here. So when it comes time to actually repeat, or, excuse me, to um, prepare custom reports, uh, we'll be able to dig into the value list accordingly. Down here we see the collection as we um, uh, basically the collections are a subset of the value list. So it says, well, here's all the agents, but this might say something like, yeah, but of all those agents, I want all the agents whose first name begins with M. So this is a subset of a value list and we'll be given the opportunity a little bit later on to uh, go visit these value lists and modify them. 
Okay, it's time to schedule a report. I punch out the scheduler here and I note in the schedule list there are no reports that are scheduled. Let's create one by punching up create and pulling down here a little bit I can find the CSQ activity report. That's the one we want to report on and I'll set the filter for that and setting the filtering criteria says I only want to report on the salespeople and the skill group here and we'll go to the top on the report interval we'll make it for this month I'm all set to go there we'll punch that up this thing needs a name a scheduled name so I'm going to just call that my CSQ schedule and uh, we'll go with that over here to the right I would like to indicate that this is going to be scheduled for not Monday, not Tuesday, not Wednesday, not Thursday, not Friday, but we'll run this on Saturday and once a week. Also we'll run it uh, when it occurs at 12.01 a.m. I always like to do that. In addition to that I can establish, if I want this emailed, I can add an email address to this. and when this report runs it'll send it to that email address when it gets sent it's going to be sent as a contact service queue activity report it's going to say in the subject line my CSQ schedule with a date and a time on it and rather than inline HTML we're going to send that out as a landscape PDF additionally we can point this to a um, uh, an SFTP site uh, and send it out to a host and to a port and a username and password to authenticate and whatever the directory path that might be. So the general settings are here, they look pretty good and we'll save this report and we should be good to go there. By punching up the run now we can see that a report was surely generated and the email did not work because yes I gave you a bogus email address. One of the more impressive capabilities of CUIC is the ability to stream live data. This is about live data reports. The agents have four reports that they're capable of seeing if they're giving the reporting rights and the supervisors have about seven reports they can use. Let's click on the CSQ statistics report here for a second and we get our friendly filter page. Let's examine sales and support again and go ahead and run this report. In this report we see two agents that are out there, Carmen Logue and Bruce Wilkinson. And uh, Carmen uh, works just with the sales group and Bruce works with the sales CSQ, or support CSQ, excuse me, and there are no calls waiting. Let's change that right now by dialing up the sales CSQ. I've made two phone calls in the sales CSQ and I see that there are two calls waiting for Carmen's uh, group there. Let's take a look and see what's going on with Carmen. Here's Bruce's supervisor desktop and he's looking down here. Well, Carmen's not ready. And sure enough, we're going to highlight Carmen and make her ready, and let's see what happens. Sure enough, there goes a call. There's still two calls waiting. Carmen has not answered the call yet, and we now will answer the call. And sure enough, there's Carmen on the call. So that's how that works, and we're about to show you something very, very cool here. This is a contact center supervisor that prefers to only be annoyed if there's more than two calls, if there's more than one call waiting. Let's build a filter for that. I can open from this page the filter and I find a tab in here called advanced filters. And in advanced filters I have three sets of information that I can get based on this query. Calls waiting, we'll leave it with that and then that we can edit. Uh, this currently is set to any value of calls waiting. Well, let's just say, hey, what if it's equal to zero or 
better yet, let's say if it's greater than 1. And now we'll run this report and we will still see that there are no calls waiting for either Carmen or Bruce. While that's going on, I will make Carmen not ready. Let's check out and see what happens here. We're going to launch one call in and we expect to see nothing because we're only going to get this report if it's greater than one. So here goes one call in and the help desk service is receiving that one call. Nothing shows up on this page. Let's launch another call and see what happens. In three seconds or less we'll get a report that says there are two calls in queue. That's pretty cool. In fact, I think that's so cool, I'll punch up this other button over here. It says click here to run report in new window. And we'll fire up that report in a new window. And this gives us the opportunity to run this report in a window in some kind of an overhead projector as if it was a wall board. And there's that agent, the sales CSQ, they have two calls waiting and the longest call in queue has been 53 seconds. Very nice feature. One of many supervisor live data reports is the voice CSQ agent detail report and it gives us the status of the agents. We'll note here that Carmen is not ready and sure enough the current state says that she is not ready and she's been not ready for 43 seconds. I will at this point make Carmen ready and within three seconds we'll see her current state has changed to ready. Only agents who are logged in will appear on this report. So the ability to pop out reports, the ability to see real time uh, what is happening and the ability to filter that in the way that the supervisor might want to see it, that's a pretty powerful feature of CUIC. And finally, let's visit the CUIC audit report. This report is available to the super user and as part of the stock reports under Intelligence Center Admin there is a audit trail here. Let's go investigate the audit trail and what we'd like to do is notice that again we've got our filter page here and let's filter for everything this month. We'll bop on down here and go pick the CUIC administrator and we'll go pick uh, M. Griffin, he's a troublemaker, and see what it is that we can do with finding out who made changes. Not only that, but we're going to the advanced filter part here and we'd like to filter on a specific operation. So let's go see what operations we have available to us. There were some delete operations that were done that we're aware of. There's a lot of logins in there, so and logouts, so we'll pick one of those. And a save as was done many times. Now we can go check and see who did all that stuff. Let's go do a run on this report. And sure enough, there's all the reports. It looks like that M. Griffin and CUIC administrator did a lot of stuff. Uh, M. Griffin logged out there. I assume he logged back in, but we didn't collect any login information with the advanced uh, filtering that we did. But you can see a lot of the information that's been available to us. Now we can go in and see who did what and when they did it. And this is kind of important not just to figure out who did what and who did it, but sometimes you make an administrative mistake or something that you'd like to reverse. Let's go back in the record and see what it is that you changed and correct it that way. Pretty neat little feature. Well, this is Marty Griffin saying that's about all for now. Thank you very much for listening in. And hopefully we'll see you on the next video, Customizing Stock Reports. Thanks again.